Hey, physicists. So um, for Friday of this week, and it's posted a little bit early so that if you see this, you can jump on into it. But um, in unit two, motion and vectors, there's a gizmos, which is a virtual lab. Um, you might remember we did this with the distance and time graphs, displacement and time graphs, when we had the people outside that were running around so that we could start to gain some insight into um, the links between graphs and motion. And in this gizmo, you'll be looking specifically at the effects of gravity and the acceleration due to gravity. And so uh, you wanna pull this up. It won't look exactly like this when you pull up Schoology, but there will be a link or some sort of uh, begin assignment or edit my document for you, okay? Uh, you do wanna go ahead and make sure you open the free fall laboratory in a new tab. And uh, when you are done working on the exploration sheets, when you are working on those, you'll actually be working on those kind of through like the Schoology portal. And you'll have a button somewhere in the top right that'll say submit assignment. And you actually wanna click on that when you are completely done with these documents, okay? Now over on Gizmos, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you don't see a timer when you're on that page. And you probably will see a timer right away because it's been a little while since we've used gizmos. So you're going to want to make sure that you log in. And once you log in, then that timer will go away. Um, real quick, you'll have to look briefly to uh, remind yourself or you can pause the video. But these are all of your usernames for gizmos. And if you need help figuring out your passwords, I can remind you of what those are. But again, I had given you guys the suggestion to use your school password. Um, so try that first. And if you're having trouble, then let me know and I can uh, look and see what your password actually is and try to give you some clues or something like that because I try not to write passwords down um, except for when it's unavoidable. So you should see this gizmo when you're on here and you should see no timer. You should see your name up at the top, okay? Uh, while I'm on here right now, briefly, when you're completely done using the gizmo and you have submitted your exploration sheets, what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down below the gizmo to find the assessment questions, okay? And you may even wanna take a look at the assessment questions before you start on the gizmo, just so you kind of know what types of questions you should be able to answer after doing the gizmo. So typically in class, if we're doing these, these prior knowledge questions we, we would do as kind of like a class warm up. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of talk you through those now in the video. The other thing to notice is that there's vocabulary words that you should know what they mean at the very least by the end of the gizmo, okay? So right now, acceleration is a word you should know the meaning of and you should know what the our typical equation is for that. Velocity is a word you should know. And while we haven't discussed it in this class, I would think that you should know what a vacuum is at this point as well, okay? Some of these other words or terms, you might know what they are or you might know what they're related to, but definitely by the end of the gizmo, you should know what those mean, okay? So as a warm up question, just for the class and for the activity, suppose you dropped a feather and a hammer at the same time, which object, object would hit the ground first? And of course, we maybe wanna think about why, but if you dropped a feather and a hammer, hopefully you said that the hammer would hit first, maybe because it has less air resistance. You don't necessarily have to explain the questions just asking which one. Now, if you repeat that in an airless tube or vacuum, and so just in case there you see that they've just defined that term of vacuum, vacuum would be airless or the lack of air. This means there's not gonna be any air particles around that can bump into the hammer or the feather. Would that change the result? And if so, how? So if you kind of are thinking at as high of a level as you could be, and if you're thinking about the vacuum and the effect that has, then you might say that in a vacuum, there will be no air resistance. So both objects 
would hit at the same time, which would be a change in the result, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete those words because when you start on this, my words would probably be visible to you. And I want it to be empty so that you can fill it in with your own actual words. And then there's a gizmo warm up. And typically, we would do this as a class as well. And the gizmo warm up is just supposed to be helping to get you familiar with looking at the particular gizmo that you're on. Okay. <clears throat> so, in the free fall lab, the gizmo allows you to measure the motion of an object in free fall. On the description tab, check that the shuttlecock is selected, the initial height is three meters, and the atmosphere is air. So, shuttlecock three meters and air, right? And that's all on the description tab. Notice that you could also pull up a table, there's bar charts and graphs. And so as you work through the gizmo, you'll be asked to look at some of those different things, okay? Click play to release the shuttlecock. How long does it take to fall to the bottom? So we're lucky here with the shuttlecock, even though normally those could bounce a little bit and this gizmo in this simulation right now, it didn't bounce at all. And so the time here, the timer stopped when the shuttlecock hit the floor, okay? You could also see that on the table over here, 0 0.90 seconds. If we scroll down to 0 0.90 seconds, you should see there that the height is zero, okay? In fact, it's so close to being zero, exactly at 0 0.90 seconds, that even though it's just a fraction of a second longer, that rounds to 0 0.90 when it has hit the ground. So that's what you wanna put in here, 0 0.90 seconds. Remember, we always wanna include a unit with our value. Select the graph tab, the box labeled H or meters, height in meters should be checked, displaying a graph of height versus time. What does this graph show? So select the graph tab, make sure height is checked, Notice that you can check other variables to see those as well, okay? What does the height show? Well, it shows generally a curve, right? That this curves downwards, kind of like what shape from math class. Hopefully you're saying a P word, which would be parabola. So the height decreases, in a curved line like a parabola, okay? Like a parabola. Turn on the velocity to see a graph of velocity versus time. So you should be thinking back to earlier in the week now, you wanna be thinking about this position. How is this position changing? How is this height changing? Well, it's decreasing, correct? So what would the velocity be? If our height, is, if our change in height is negative, then our velocity should also be negative, right? So the slope of this line is the velocity, right? A slope of a position versus timeline is a velocity. And so all of these velocity values are negative, okay? So does the velocity stay constant as the object drops? Does the velocity stay constant? No, it's increasing in the negative direction, correct? The value itself is getting bigger, even though the sign is negative. So does the velocity stay constant? No, okay. And then turn on acceleration to see the rate at which velocity changes over time. What does this graph show? What would you expect to see here for acceleration? How is this velocity changing? Yes, the velocity has a negative slope, okay. And the velocity is going down on this graph, but is the velocity going down faster and faster and faster? Or is, does it look like it's um, the velocity itself is not changing by as much as time goes on? So when you turn on acceleration, hopefully you see that acceleration starts out very negative, okay? And acceleration is still negative, but that the magnitude of acceleration has actually decreased as the shuttlecock has fallen. So what does this graph show? Again, it shows that the acceleration is decreasing 
over time. And by decreasing, we mean getting closer to zero. Okay, so you want to be careful when you're using words like increase and decrease, especially when we're looking at things with different signs. Now from here, if we were in class, typically you would work in small groups and you would be able to discuss what you see with your neighbors as you work through the following pages, these activities. These activities ask you to do different things. Always make sure that you get the gizmo ready by doing what it asks you to do at the start of the page, okay? So when you click on reset, notice everything goes back to how it was in the beginning. Um, I'm gonna do tennis ball real quick, just to show that to you and to show you what value you should be getting when you do it. If you choose the tennis ball, notice that it asks you to try to pause when the tennis ball hits the ground. And so why? Well, because it's bouncing, right? Well, if it's bouncing, what do you think you're gonna see in the table? Well, in the table, you should see as it bounces that the height at some point is zero, right? And so see this first point where the height is zero is at 0 0.81 seconds. That is what you should be observing here for the tennis ball, okay? Notice that we also already did the shuttlecock. And so that was 0 0.90 seconds. And the rest of these, you're gonna to need to test as you go through, okay? Again, when you get to the next activity, make sure that you do the things that the activity is asking you to do to get the gizmo ready, okay? Um, and then activity C, okay? Now, when I grade these for you guys, these are kind of a mix between completion and accuracy. So you're usually about half of your points. So 50 out of 100 points, you would earn just for completing the worksheets. And then I typically spot check three or four or five of the questions. And depending on how well you answered those questions or whether the data in a table is correct based off of what you should have observed when you did the um, experiment, okay? whatever you should have observed when you did that experiment, that's gonna be constant, that's not gonna change. And so I'll be checking over that kind of stuff for an accuracy grade as well. So about 50% of the grade for gizmos comes from completing it, and about 50% of the grade comes from uh, being accurate in your observations and uh, based off of what you explained for different things or what you calculated at different points, okay? So you don't wanna rush through this. Um, as this guides you through the activity, you actually really should be getting the right answers as you go, and you should be gaining some insight into how things fall and um, what the, that depends on when things fall, okay? So uh, I hope this is helpful as an intro for this activity. And I'm going to get this video posted as soon as possible now on Thursday. And again, this is the activity for you for Friday of this virtual learning week.